So in the last episode, we set up our database model for our blog posts, and now we need to actually build out a route so that we can respond to that and display our blog posts. So what we're gonna do is we're going to set up a root route to point to a controller that will handle our blog posts. And Rails conveniently includes this uh, root example in the routes by default. And root will respond to the empty slash, nothing behind it, that is the main, when you visit your domain, that's the main route, uh, or root route as they call it, that will be uh, used. And the syntax for this is simple. You have on the left side of this hash, uh, hash symbol, you have the controller name, and on the right side, you have the action name. And your controller is going to be something like blog posts controller. You don't need to put the controller name in here, and you also wanna make sure you use the underscored version of this. And we're gonna use the index action, which displays all of the blog posts. Um, and that is going to be our root route. So if you go back to our terminal, and we run the Rails server again, wait for it to boot up, we can open this up in our browser and we're going to get an error page now, but you wanna not freak out about this. These errors are very important and you wanna understand what they're saying. So this says routing error, uninitialized constant blog posts controller. So what it's done is it's seen that we are now on the slash route because there's no uh, URL after the domain and port. So it's noticed that we're on this route and we wanna send it to the blog post controller and you just have not defined one yet. So it's able to look at this route and see the controller name blog underscore posts. It converts that to the uh, capitalized version of it, blog posts, and it adds the word controller in there and it looks for that controller. We haven't defined it yet, so that's why there's an error. So we can go into app controllers, we'll add a new file, blog underscore posts, controller, and you want to be very careful that you have your plural and singular stuff uh, defined correctly. If you make it plural, it's going to look for a plural file name and a plural class inside of here. So every time we define a file in Rails, we typically need to define a class that matches the name of the file. So we have a blog post controller file uh, .rb file, and we need to define a class that defines the blog post controller class. So say blog posts controller, but we'll capitalize it and Rails knows how to look that up and find it for us. So we don't even have to um, require this anywhere manually. Rails knows how to load these files and look for the matching uh, class or module inside of there. We're also going to inherit from application controller, like our model inherits from application record so that it can become a active record object this is going to inherit from application controller, which is defined here, which is an action controller. And this is going to give us all the features we need to process HTTP requests, get their parameters, and handle those requests and uh, responses. So inside of here, if we save this, we will now have that file and we can refresh our page and Rails is going to say, okay, great, we found your blog post controller, but you didn't define an index action in there yet. So it says unknown action, the action index could not be found, and that just means we need to add a method in here called index. We don't have to do anything, and we can refresh our page, and it will change the error, because now it finds the index action, and it says no template for this request. Blog post controller index is missing, missing a template for the HTML format. And it says, unless told otherwise, Rails expects an action to render a template or a view with the same name, contained in a folder named after the controller itself. So this doesn't really explain exactly what it wants you to do, but what it really is trying to tell you is under your views folder, if we create a new folder called blog posts to match, and we make a new file in there called index.html.erb, and we put an h1 tag, my blog, inside of here. Rails will render this controller. It will run the index action. The index action will intuitively know, even though we didn't do any work here, it's going to 
No, okay, you didn't render anything. So we're gonna look for views and find the matching folder for the blog posts controller. We're in views, so it removes the word controller from there. And then we were in the index action, so we're gonna look for an index.html.erb file inside of there. So Rails is putting all this stuff together for you behind the scenes intuitively because it knows as long as you follow this pattern that we expect you to follow, we can have you write zero code. You just define those empty actions and it knows how to render everything for us. So here we have now finally our blog, which is awesome, super cool. So now we have an empty controller that renders an HTML file, which is good, but what about our blog posts that are in the database? Well, for one, we don't have any more blog posts, so we should open up our terminal here and run Rails console. And if you still have this, we can go back up and create a new blog post with our previous example, maybe a Hello World 2. This is my very second blog post. And we'll now have two blog posts in our database. And what we can do is we can query our database for those blog posts when we render this page and then have our HTML include those blog posts on the page. So what we need to do is our controller is the one that decides what to look up in the database. So if we look up all the blog posts in our database, we can use that model and say, give me all of the blog posts, save them to this instance variable, which is uh, represented with the at symbol, at blog posts. And the reason we're gonna use an instance variable here for at blog posts is because these variables, for instance variables, Rails knows to share those with your ERB templates. So if you were to use a local variable, it would get cleared out after index finishes executing. But with the instance variables, we can keep them around so that when Rails says, oh, let's render out the index, we can actually use that variable here. Now, ERB is a special template that understands Ruby code and HTML. So there's a couple fancy little ERB tags that we can use. Um, and the two of them that we can use are the equals and one without the equals. And let's do this first one here. If we print one and two in those, this is gonna evaluate everything inside of these ERB tags as Ruby code. So if we save this and we refresh our page in the browser, what we're gonna see is the number two printed out, but the number one is not uh, printed out at all. So what happens here is that the tags with the equals will take the output, the return value of the code from Ruby inside of the ERB tags, and it will print it out in the HTML. If you don't have an equals, it will just take the output and get rid of it. It does not put that in the HTML. So you need to be a little bit careful here, but you can use these in conjunction. So what we can say is all of our blog posts, we can go through each of them. We can define a local variable called blog post. We can make a loop and we can then print out the blog post title for each one and we'll maybe make an h2 tag for each of these. And then we can print out the blog post body. And what we'll see here is that this loop is not going to print out any output. The only thing that we're gonna see is the h2s for the titles. And we're using the equals here so that we get the output of the title. And the body also gets printed out into the page. And we're probably gonna to wanna to wrap this in a div so that it doesn't all blend together. And we can save that, refresh our page, and now we have a functional blog. We just have to create our database records for our blog posts in the Rails console or directly in our database editor. Um, but we have a functional blog, which is awesome. So if you were ever to make a mistake and accidentally put an equals in the wrong place, what would happen is you'll see after it goes through the loop, the return value of that blog post each is printed out as well. And the blog posts variable is an array of blog posts and we see that printed out here in the HTML, even though we didn't want that there. So if you ever notice some weird output in your HTML, that is because you had an equals 
in your ERB tags that you didn't need. So refreshing that fixes that and we are good to go. So the next step is our blog posts are great, but really they deserve their own pages. So when you click on Hello World or Hello World 2, we want to go to another URL to actually read the entire blog post. We just want summaries on the homepage. So just like the Rails blog, we want to be able to click on the blog post and uh, navigate to that. So we want to be able to click on the title and go read the full blog post here and then we can click on another one and see that separately. And each one of these, uh, in Rails, their blog, they've actually got the date in the URL and the title of the blog post, which is pretty cool. We can do other things like that, but we're gonna keep ours simple and have the blog post by ID, which is the pretty normal standard way of doing that. We'll do that in the next episode.